Hello, this is the Cobra M51 SPC, which is a 20 inch rotary mower, ideal for larger lawns. And this is how it arrives in this big sturdy box. So what we're gonna do is cut the box open, take the mower and everything out, and I'm gonna show you how to assemble it and get it ready for mowing your lawn. Here we have the mower all unpacked now from the box. We've taken off the protective coverings. It is a large mower this, and it's got a powerful engine. It's 173cc. So we've got the main mower here that needs a bit of assembly on it. And then here we've got the grass collection box, the side discharge chute here. Uh, we've got a spark plug, spanner we've also got some cable clips that we need and two manuals we've got one for the mower itself and then one for the cobra engine so what we're going to do to start with is to put the handlebar assembly on that's really all we've got to do with the mower and then it's ready to go so that's really simple to do they're folded down like this first thing is you'll notice that when you get it it's got protective caps on the end there that's just to stop it scratching anything when it's in transit so we need to make sure that we take those off before we start anything and they can be disposed of. And then what we're gonna do, I'm just gonna fold this back and show you how that will fold down. So that is how the handlebar will be, but we've got to attach it to these side brackets on the mower. So I've got to take out these nuts and bolts to start with, and then we can bolt this into place. So I'm just gonna put that there temporarily and then I can take out these nuts and bolts. So these are just finger tight on there. So there's a nut, a bolt, flat washer and a spring washer for each one. And then the same on this side just here. Now you can usually do this job on your own but if you're struggling it might be helpful if you've got somebody that can just to hold the handle bars in place for you just while you locate them. Okay, and all we need is a 13 millimeter spanner. That isn't provided, so you need a 13 millimeter spanner. So what I'm gonna do now is offer this up into position. Uh, it sometimes helps if you actually fold that back the other way, because then it will just support it. So you need to make sure you don't trap any cables. I'm just gonna fold the back down, and then I can lift the handlebars up, and I've got to locate them on the outside of this bracket here. So they will slot into there and just adjust them so that the holes line up. And I'm gonna put the bolt through from the inside out. It's got a square end on it and it fits into a square hole which will lock it into position. So it's just a little bit of jiggling just to get that first one in. And once you've got that in, life is much easier. So then we're gonna put onto that a flat washer and then a split washer. And then we can put the nut on. And we're just going to do that finger tight to start with and then we're going to repeat with the bottom hole just again a bit of a wiggle just to get it into position and then again it's a case of the flat washer followed then by the spring washer on there just push that through and then the nut on there finger tight and then it's a case of repeating that on the other side Once they're all on finger tight, we can then tighten them up with the 13 millimeter spanner. The bolt can't twist at the back because it's got a square lock on it. So that's gonna hold firm. And we want them nice and tight on those spring washers so that the handlebars don't wobble at all. So tighten those up like that and then repeat on this side. We can then just bring the handlebars into the vertical position, again, making sure there are no cables trapped at all. And, and they've got these quick release handles on there that are already adjusted. So we just clip those then into place. Again, check the cable at this side. 
make sure that that's okay like that. So we've now got the handlebars firmly in position. The great thing about it is for storage, they can be released and the handlebars then folded forward so you can put it in a shed or a garage. And then all we need to do is to put on the cable clips just to prevent the cables from flapping around. So this one's got two on it, so I'm just gonna pop those into there like that and they just simply clip around the handlebar and the same with this cable just here put the cable inside it and clip it into position so that's that ready to go all i want to do now while we've got it here is we've got a pull recoil to start this and there is a little bracket here for it so it's mounted midway so we push in the red handle which is the engine brake lever just to take the compression off the engine and then that will pull out nice and easily and we can just literally loop that round and that holds that in place for when we want to start using the mower so that's the basic setup of the mower. It's now ready to use, of course, when it's got petrol and oil in it. So what we can do now is to fit the grass box, because this mower is what we call a three-in-one. So there's three different ways it will mow your lawn. So the traditional way is to collect the grass cuttings. We can also use a mulch mowing plug in there, and it's got a side discharge. So if I lift the back flap here, we can see inside we've got the mulch plug. Uh, and this basically just clips in and out very very simply into the mower and it means that when we're cutting the grass instead of the grass being blown out of the back of the mower into the collection bag it just whizzes round underneath the deck of the mower it's chopped very finely it blows it down into the lawn so it disappears from sight and it also returns nutrients to the grass and helps to keep it green and lush for longer through the summer especially when it's dry so you leave that in if you're mulch mowing if you don't want to mulch mow you just simply take that out and keep it somewhere safe and then you can fit your grass box. Now this has got on it two protective little caps when you unpack it from the box. So you need to take these off. They're only there just to prevent them being damaged, the ends causing damage in transit, scratching anything. So they just simply twist off and you don't need those anymore. So they are literally just protective caps. And then if we lift the flap there, we just hook it on to the springs at the top very simply and then just release the flap and that holds that in position. It's also got a little uh, window in the top so you can observe when it's full of grass clippings in there. So that's a handy little piece there. The other way you can use this mower is with a side discharge. And that is if you're mowing longer grass and you don't want to collect it, it's too long to mulch. So it just throws it out the side of the mower. So to do that, we would take off the grass box and we would refit the mulch plug so it only takes seconds to do and then we use this side discharge chute here and this works around this side of the mower here there's a flap that lifts up it's got a little catch at the top just to lock it in position so we can lift this flap and then this simply fits in under the little steel bar there so it fits in we lower that flap which is spring loaded to hold that in position so when the grass is cut it can't go out the back of the mower so it whizzes round and it sends it out this side chute here and then throws it out on the lawn and you can either rake it up or leave it so it's great if you've got longer grass in an orchard or somewhere where the grass has got a bit out of uh, control so that's basically it it's now ready so what we're going to do is lift it off the bench put it outside and we can get some petrol and oil in it and I'll show you how you start it this is quite a large mower, so it is heavy. So when you are moving it, you're probably gonna need two people to do it. Oil is provided with the mower. So this is a bottle of oil here, and this contains 0.6 of a litre. And this size engine needs 0.6 of a litre. So the contents of this, we're gonna put into the oil sump here. So we're gonna take off the filler cap, this yellow filler cap here, which has also got the dipstick on the end of it. So we take that out, screws into position and I can take that off now. And then it's a case of pouring the whole of the bottle into it nice and slowly. So there we go, the full bottle, 0.6 of a litre in there. And of course, all the details about the fuel and the volumes are in the manual that come with the engine. So you've got all of that information as well. It's also worth just checking with the dipstick. We know we've put the right amount in, but it's just worth checking and you should check the oil on a regular basis anyway. So screw the dipstick fully in 
and then take it back out again and we can just check it on the dipstick and it, it's new oil so it's difficult to see but I can see that that's on the hatched area there at the base of the dipstick so that is absolutely spot on. So that's all oiled up. Next we need to put the petrol in and this is unleaded petrol and the filler cap is here so we take that off. Always use fresh petrol, don't use some that you've had in a can in the garage for months and months because it does go stale and we need fresh petrol for the engine to run efficiently. And this model also has a fuel tap, which you can see is this little red tap here. Make sure that's the on position. It comes in the on position and you can see that it's in line with the pipe. To turn it off, you turn it so it crosses the pipe, so that blocks the flow of petrol. So we need that to be on the on position to start the mower. Just before we start the mower, I'll just point out the height of cut lever here. It's on this side of the mower. There's one lever that adjusts all the wheels. It's actually got 10 positions, so quite a high cutting height there if you want to. When you get it out of the box, it will be on the lowest setting. So it's always a good idea just to raise it off the ground when you start the mower anytime, just so that it doesn't scuff the grass or cause any stress to the engine when you're turning it over. So we've lifted that up and now we can start it. So controls at the top, we've got the brake uh, engine lever here, this one stops the engine, we have to have that one pulled in to be able to start the mower and then the lever at the back is to self propel the wheels, so once we've got the engine running with this red lever in, we push the black lever in and that propels us forward. Here we have the choke lever, so there are two positions here, so at the top we can see that it's obstructing the airflow, so that is when the choke is on. When we start the engine, we gradually move it down just until the engine warms up until it's in the run position at the bottom. So to start it from cold, it needs to be pulled back like that. So we're going to start the mower now, so we've got to pull back the red lever here um, and then we can pull it, we've got the choke on. Now this is a new mower and yours will be when you take it out of the box, so it can take a few pulls because you've got to get the fuel initially through from the tank into the carburettor. So let's see how it goes. And there you go, running really smoothly, we put the choke off but then to stop it we just release this lever. So there you have it. So great mower for the garden this is, everything you need to know about it is in the manual that you get with it, so happy mowing with your Cobra. Remember to register your Cobra online at www.cobragarden.co.uk. Always have your Cobra serviced regularly, check the website for your nearest dealer.